Welcome back, man. Coach, we're about to talk about an exciting subject. We're going to talk about heaven. Now, you ever thought you were about to go there? <laughs> well, let me relay a little experience I had. Uh, about uh, six years ago, we were leaving Loudon, New Hampshire. And after the races, you're normally so wiped out and everything, and there's seven guys in this airplane, and uh, you know everybody's kind of half asleep. And so we start climbing out of there, and really, I kind of went to sleep. I thought we were at 40,000 feet. We wound up being at about 20. And so as we're kind of dozing there, all of a sudden in this airplane, there is a loud bam. I mean, really loud. And then there's a real loud but I mean, it's so loud, it's deafening. And then all of a sudden you hear the pilots going, mayday, mayday. That's not good. <laughs> the oxygen mask all drop, okay? <laughs> so everybody's going, oh my gosh. So now think about this. When you put an oxygen mask on, what's left? It's just your eyes, okay? So I'm looking at these guys on the airplane. We had young, one young guy that worked on our motor sitting on my right, and he had already, it was notorious, he hated flying. Oh, no. Okay, so <laughs> I look over at him, and he's got these great big eyes. He looks out the window, and we're in a direct dive. I mean, the pilots are taking this thing on a dive with this loud racket, and the other thing that's happening is it is heating up inside. I mean, it was so hot, I put my hand on the carpet. My fear was, this thing's going to catch on fire. And if it did in a small cockpit like that, you know, you, you got a real problem. Well, anyway, I look over at this young guy, and he looks out the window like this, and he turns and looked at me, and he goes, we're over water. <laughs> <laughs> and I went like this and went back to it. I went, that's a good thing. <laughs> I'd rather hit water than hit a rock. And so, man, this thing's in a dive. And you hear the pilots and they're talking and the, we get down and they kind of level off. And evidently on those type of jets, there's a valve in there. It doesn't happen, you know, obviously it doesn't happen, but just a rare experience. But this thing blew. When, when it blows like that in those airplanes, it starts passing that hot air from the motors through there because one of the things that could happen to you if you're high altitude, you could freeze to death in 10 seconds. Mm. So... This experience, we come down level off, and the bottom line on it, the pilots are talking, you know, we kind of get the thing leveled off at about 5,000 feet, and they let us come all the way back home that way. Now, having said that, <laughs> it passed through my mind. This could be it. So you, <laughs> you know what so, I mean? And so this could be it. So I have had a near-death experience, at least in my mind. And so, uh, you know, I think it's one of those things that does have an effect upon you. And certainly that experienced me. I'll never forget it. And neither would all those guys in there that I was with. I think the other thing that kind of, uh, when we talk about heaven, I think about how fragile life is here on earth. Uh, we had an experience in racing. Uh, we're racing at Daytona um, 500. And probably the most well-known race car driver that's ever been in NASCAR was Dale Earnhardt Sr. And we're all in the 500 race. And it actually comes down towards the end of the race, and there's a wreck in there. And actually, our two cars, and uh, we had Bobby Labonte and Tony Stewart driving our cars at that time. It is an awful looking wreck. Uh, Tony goes all the way up in the air, tumbles, and actually comes down on our other car, Bobby Labonte. Yeah. And so it's an awful looking wreck. And so I'm immediately afterwards, uh, I've gone with Tony Stewart to the hospital and I'm sitting in the hospital with him and the race finishes and with a, a last lap to go, Dale Earnhardt is towards the front of the pack, gets turned a little sideways by another car and shoots straight into the wall. And it doesn't look like it's much of a wreck. Ours looked awful. This doesn't look like much of a wreck. And then afterwards the news came to us that... Um, Dale Earnhardt had been killed in that wreck. And I think for everybody, it was a shock in the NASCAR world. And, I, you know, when something like that happens, I think you step back and you say to yourself, man, how fragile life is. Mm -hmm. I mean, many times I, I would say to you, well, hey, next week I'm going to do this. And then next month we're going on vacation. Maybe not. <laughs> and I think maybe to a 70-year-old, it's a little more 
fragile than <laughs> somebody your age, Derwin. But you know, you really start thinking a lot about it. The great thing for us, having given our life to Christ and being on His team, He has said, I'm preparing a place for you in heaven. I mean, I'm, I'm excited about that. Randy Alcorn will give you an excitement about heaven. And it's actually got me to the point where that is going to be exciting. And so it gave me a totally different outlook on, on heaven and hell. We know that if you choose to play against God, we also know that that place is described in God's Word. That is an awful place. I don't think anybody wants to wind up for the rest of your life forever. God said He made us with a soul that lives forever. And so I think the question for us is, okay, getting on God's team, we play forever for Him or we play against Him forever. Well, let's get to it. Let's take a look at Randy Alcorn's stats. Heaven was not, as I think back on it, until I kind of met you, read your book, kind of changed my total outlook on heaven. Before that, I kind of didn't spend a lot of time really focused or talking about it or trying to talk to somebody about heaven. I remember years ago seeing a, a Far Side cartoon where there's a, a man who's sitting on a cloud. He's, he's gone to heaven. He's got a halo over his head. There's a harp next to him, which he's obviously not interested in. And then the caption is, I wish I'd brought a magazine. And, you know, and it, I thought, you know, they're, they're, that's exactly the way so many people, and including, sadly, you know, many Christians who have not thought it through biblically because the Bible actually clearly reveals that there is a resurrection, not only of our bodies, but a resurrection of the earth itself. And that's the, the ultimate promise, a new earth. So we will be new people with new bodies on a new earth, not non-bodies and a non-earth, new bodies and a new earth. The old bodies made well, perfected, uh, the old earth made well, redeemed. And so we will enjoy in a redeemed culture the things that God has made us to love for eternity. And you think about it, we are made in the image of God. So that's why we love to use our imagination. That's why where literature comes from. Think about art, music, sports. All of these are a manifestation of qualities that God has put in us. Those didn't come from the devil. Those aren't the result of sin. Now, of course, they can all, can somebody do sports and sin? Of course. Mm -hmm. You can do anything and sin. You can also do sports to the glory of God. And Scripture says, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. So some people, when they envision eternity, they think of this very passive thing. But the Bible says in Revelation 22, His servants will serve Him. Servants have things to do, places to go, people to see. They're active. Now, is God going to take away from us what it means to be made in His image when we're in His presence? Is He going to take away the gifts He's given us? Is He going to take away responsibilities? No. Scripture says we will reign with Christ. That is a management responsibility. You know a lot about management responsibilities, and, and a lot of viewers know a lot about management responsibilities. We'll have things to do, and we will uh, guide and, 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 and counsel each other and all of these kinds of things. Well, this is part of this new culture on a new earth that God promises. And people talk about, well, will I know my loved ones? Well, of course. I mean, we will, will we remember? Well, Revelation 6 says that the martyrs who are in heaven look down on earth and they say, how long, O Lord, before you bring judgment on those who persecuted us? Now, they not only rem remember the good things that happened on earth, mm -hmm. they remember the bad things. It doesn't get any worse than having been murdered for their faith. And you have lots of illustrations in Scripture. Uh, when somebody comes to faith in Christ, we're told there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of heaven. It doesn't just say the angels rejoice. It says there's rejoicing in their presence. Well, who else is in their presence? The people of God who have gone on to be with the Lord. And they're looking down and they're seeing people come to faith in Christ, maybe people they prayed for for years. And 
they are rejoicing at that. So the promise of Scripture is not this vague float in the clouds, strum on the harps type thing. It is a redeemed culture, redeemed people with redeemed bodies. Will those bodies be able to eat food? Absolutely. Scripture repeatedly talks about banquets in God's presence. They'll come from the east and the west to sit at a table with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and we'll, we'll know people and we'll spend time together. Will those same bodies that eat and drink and walk and people are talking to each other using vocal cords, we see all this in Scripture. Will we be able to participate in sports, for instance? Of course. Why would we not be able to? Mm -hmm. and, and this is the question we need to ask, is that not simply, well, gee, you know, there's nothing in the Bible that talks about playing football or driving cars, you know, in the new earth. Well, yeah, it, it doesn't have to talk about those things. But it does tell us we're going to have a real life with real people and real culture, with real bodies. We're going to eat and drink. And we're going to do the things people do with bodies, mm -hmm. only without sin. It'll all be righteous. That excites me because right. that gives me a new vision uh, for me of heaven. It's going to be excited. Right. I'm not right. going to have the pain and suffering. Um, but it is going to be getting to compete and still exactly. do the things that we like to do. That does excite you and it completely changes your idea on heaven. One of the other things for me on this earth that I enjoy the most is the relationships. Obviously my grandkids are hugely important to me. You just love to see them grow up and it's amazing to me the way the attraction to each one of them, all eight of them, is they have their own special way and they have a way of capturing you. Right. So talk, talk for me for just a minute. To, I think it's real important for the people out there to, to know um, recognizing people there and how will it be with our family and friends and loved ones. If somebody was to say to me, well, you know, in heaven, you're not going to remember those kids yeah. and you're not going to remember your own kids and you're not going to remember your relationship with Nancy and you're not, you say, well, here's the thing. If we didn't remember all of these relationships, we wouldn't be us. And so we wouldn't be going to heaven. I mean, something that used to be Randy or used to be Joe maybe would be in heaven. But Scripture talks about, no, we will be in heaven. And, you know, one of the things that we first see that helps us answer this question about relationships and, and, and memory and all of that is that when we stand before the Lord, it says, we'll give an account of our lives at the judgment seat of Christ. And it talks about the words, every word that we speak, everything that we've done. And of course, we're covered by the blood of Christ. We're forgiven, yet there is this accountability. We're stewards. He's the master. And what have you done with your life? Well, that takes place in heaven. So immediately we know our memories will not be worse in heaven. They'll have to be a whole lot better. If I'm going to give an account for what I've done in life, uh, how many things have I forgotten? Well, I'm going to remember all of them. So memory will be much better, not worse. And as we remember, then will we remember the relationships? Will we appreciate seeing loved ones? Will we have this sense of reunion of those who have gone on before us? Because many listeners, many viewers will have loved ones to love Jesus who died years ago. My mother died back in 1981 and we were very close. I, I was raised in a non-Christian home, had the joy of leading her to Christ uh, shortly after I became a Christian as a teenager. And very, very close and looking forward to seeing her mm -hmm. again. Well, Scripture talks about this in 1 Thessalonians 4. It says, we do not grieve as those who have no hope. And then it promises that we will together be united in the presence of the Lord. So we should look forward to being with Jesus. And we're also told that we are to look forward to being together with our loved ones. These relationships God has given us are precious. God is the inventor of these relationships. In fact, he talks about the relationship of Christ and the church as, as the bridegroom and the bride. And he says a marriage is designed to show what God's love for his people is like. God is the father and he was a father before we became fathers, before we became uh, grandparents. 
He knows what family relationship is, and he's the one who made it. Satan didn't make those things. Family relationships are not the result of sin. They're the result of God's design. So the question is, will God abandon and destroy what he himself created and called very good? And Genesis 1.31 says that. He creates, uh, there's all of creation, including there's uh, human beings, and God looks at it all in the first man, the first woman in relationship, and he says it's very good. That's what he designed. And for eternity, we will celebrate our love and worship for God in relationships with each other. And you see that in Revelation 5 and 7, for instance, in heaven. You see people, a multitude, it's described as a multitude, people of every tribe, nation, and language gathered together in praise of the Lord. Now, will we seek out and remember and sit next to at dinner the people we've known and loved, our children, our grandchildren, our close friends? Absolutely, there's every reason to believe we will do exactly that. And I, and I think that's, I think Satan works overtime to try to discredit heaven because he doesn't want people to want to mm -hmm. go there. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't want us to be excited about heaven because we'll be less prone to share our faith. Because you think about it. Now, here's, here's a person who's not going to heaven. They're tragically, they're going to hell. They don't know the Lord. But now I'm going to share the gospel with them. And I'm going to share the gospel with them in the hopes that they will come to faith in Christ so that they too can spend eternity in a drab, boring place where we know, won't know the people that we love and we won't really be human beings and we'll be just disembodied spirits floating around in a cloud. All of a sudden they go, oh, wow, that's not exactly the good news. Well, it is good news and Satan wants to blur it in our minds so we're not motivated to share that faith and, and look forward to being with the Lord. Man, this is it. This is what it's about. Super Bowl championship rings, NASCAR championship rings. As an NFL player who played in the 1996 AFC Championship game, I was close to potentially winning one of these rings, and, and my heart is pounding right now as I look at them. I mean, look at the diamonds that are shining. These, this is the reward of a job well done. But did you know that these rings and their beauty don't compare to the rewards that we'll get one day in heaven? Now, remember this. Through Jesus, our eternity is secure, but how we live today impacts our eternity. That when we allow Christ to live through us and, and he runs the race of life through us and we follow his game plan, one day he's gonna give us rewards that are gonna blow these away. And you know what we're gonna do next? We're gonna drop those rewards at his feet. So check this out. Follow God's game plan and run the race of life.